T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. And what the chamber pressure phenomenal. Vehicle is pitching down range. We are T plus 37 seconds into the mission. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Launch Complex 39A, carrying our 53 Starlink satellites into space. Power Moments ago, we began to throttle down the engines on the first stage in preparation for an event known as Max Q. This is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Max Q. Awesome. Now that Max Q is behind us, we are throttling the engines back up to full power. Coming up are a series of events happening in quick succession. First is Miko, also known as Main Engine Cutoff. This is where all nine Merlin engines on the first stage will shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for the next milestone, which is stage separation. During this event, both the, uh, the first and second stages will separate from one another. The first stage will make its way back to our drone ship, and the second stage will continue its journey with second engine startup, or SES-1. During this event, the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will light up and propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites into orbit. And then shortly after SES-1, we'll have the fairing halves deploy and expose our Starlink satellites to the vacuum of space. First of those events is expected to happen uh, in a few seconds here. You go. Stage separation confirmed. All right, so as you just saw and heard, uh, we successfully had main engine cutoff, stage separation, uh, the second stage Merlin vacuum engine you see on the right-hand side of the screen has successfully started up, and we saw the two fairing halves deploy. While the second stage is doing its job, the first stage is coming back home to Earth. That is what you see on the left-hand side of the screen. It needs to execute two burns before uh, its 13th landing attempt on our drone ship. The first burn is called the entry burn. This is a three-engine burn that helps slow down the first stage for hitting the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And then the second burn is called the landing burn. This is a single-engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship a shortfall of Gravitas. To aid in recovery, we have a couple of tools that the first stage uses. Um, so if you look closely on screen, you're seeing some bursts of gas. That is nitrogen from our attitude control system, and that helps to orient the first stage rocket. And then also on screen, we have a um, view of two of our four hypersonic grid fins. Those are the honeycomb-like structures that you see. Those will swivel, swivel and pivot, and those uh, that helps to steer the first stage back to its targeted landing zone. We also have four landing legs that are stowed at the base of the first stage. Those will deploy during the landing burn, um, and those will help secure uh, the first stage uh, as we uh, land on our drone ship.
We still have about two minutes left before the first stage entry burn. Again, the first of two burns for the first stage. For now, we are just enjoying some great views uh, of both the first stage returning back to Earth and the second stage uh, making its way to space, makes its way into orbit. Start the call out that we are in nominal trajectory, so things again continuing to go smoothly for today's Starlink mission. For those that are just joining us, we are in the middle of our 49th Starlink mission. If you weren't able to catch the liftoff, don't worry. We have two more launches this weekend, so be sure to tune in. About 30 seconds away from the first stage entry burn. We talked a little bit about the engines on our vehicle. The engine that you see on screen is uh, the single Merlin vacuum engine, which is optimized to perform in the vacuum of space. It can produce over 220,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space. The first stage engines are optimized to perform at sea level, and those can produce about 190,000 pounds of thrust. Stage one FDS has saved. Stage one entry burn startup. So on screen we have started the entry burn. This burn is expected to last for about 20 seconds. Earlier we saw the vehicle on the pad and the first stage was basically covered in soot. Stage um, one entry burn shut down. This is the reason why. So basically during the entry and landing burn, uh, the vehicle is flying through its own plume of smoke, and uh, that is what Both builds vehicles up the continue to follow nominal trajectories. So landing burn for the first stage is coming up in about a minute, and shortly after the landing burn ends, we're going to be listening for a call-out that's related to the second stage, um, known as SECO. That stands for Second Engine Cutoff, and we'll be shutting off the Merlin vacuum engine that you see on screen, and we'll be waiting for another call-out related to the second stage of a good orbital insertion. Stage one transonic. Stage two is in terminal guidance. Stage one landing burn. Stage two, FTS has saved. So our landing burn has begun. It's a single engine burn. This is also the period where we'll deploy our landing legs. And here comes our first stage for the 13th time attempting to land on our drone ship. Stage one, landing leg deploy. marks the spot for the 13th time. Okay, that is the first time that we have flown and landed a booster 13 times. Acquisition of signal, Newfoundland. Nominal orbit insertion. Uh, that is a great way to start the mission. And we also just heard the call out that the second stage engine has successfully shut off and, our, and is now in a nominal orbital insertion. With confirmation of both of those, we will confirm deployment of our Starlink satellites via SpaceX's social channels, but we'll also leave the mission audio live on our YouTube channel if you'd like to follow along through payload deploy. Thank you to the Federal Aviation Administration and our current Starlink customers, and of course, to all of our viewers. As mentioned earlier, for those of you interested, interested in, in even more space content, 
We're not done launching rockets just yet. Stay tuned for the SARA-1 mission scheduled to launch from Vandenberg Space Force Base at 7.20 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Uh, launch coverage will begin about 10 minutes before launch, 